<laughs> well, awesome. After that, I ran out of facial hair. I, 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 I think this is awesome because our audience, uh, you've, you've now uh, been able to listen to a beard talk yeah. with uh, Carrie <laughs> and Floyd over here on the Project Nerd Couch. But those of you that are tuning in, this is uh, Carrie with the I'm Not Famous podcast here broadcasting from day three of Ocon Expo in Council Bluff, Iowa. And I have the pleasure, as always, you've heard me say that every time, but today I think I was just blessed by whatever to get an introduction to this man to my left. So I have Floyd Norman, and I said that right, right? Yeah, you did. Floyd Norman here on our couch, here in the Project Nerd Pavilion, and I would love to do it justice by telling you all the details about who this man is and what he does, but I'm going to let him go ahead and do it. So, Floyd, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you've been able to do? Well, I'm just a kid who fell in love with comic books and uh, animated movies many years ago, probably when I was around six years old, when my mommy took me to see Walt Disney's Dumbo, and I decided that I wanted to be an animator and work for Walt Disney. But like most kids, you know, I wasn't all that different from all the kids I knew. We all read comic books. We all went to see animated cartoons on uh, Saturday afternoon matinees. The old serials, you know, Superman, Batman, all of that good stuff, you know, Terry and the Pirates, all that. I mean, that was my childhood. And, right. and, and I listened to all of these cool programs on the radio, too, because keep in mind, Superman was on the radio, and so was Terry and the Pirates and Steve Canyon and all of these really cool things. So I grew up on comics. Many, many years later, I would have the opportunity to meet all of these comic creators, guys like Jack Kirby. I met Jack. I met Stan Lee. I met all of these amazing guys who wrote and created the, the marvelous fantasy worlds that I enjoyed when I was a kid. Right. Yeah. But now, I mean, you gave a lot of information there, and I want to make sure that we kind of get a lot of details on that because this is, oh. this is my, my first. I, I've never been able to to be able to talk to someone of your caliber and, and the work that you've been able to produce for everyone. Yeah. Uh, and I think it, it's, it's amazing to see, because I, I might have seen it one way. You know, we're talking, obviously, initially a lot about comics. Yeah. When, when you talk about comics, I want to bring it back, right? So were comics actually books? in that? Because you, you talked about radio. When you say comics, are you referring to the broadcast on the radio then? Oh, like that Superman? too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm talking about when I was a kid, uh, comics was not only in the comic book store that you bought. Well, actually, we didn't even have comic book stores back right, then. Right, right. I bought my comics at the local drugstore. Oh, wow. Uh, for a dime, because that's what they cost back then. But not only did I read comic books, but we had these Saturday um, afternoon serials at the movie theater. Okay. This is before television. Right. Before uh, uh, comics and animation you know, came to television, we would go to the movie theater to watch uh, you know, the serials with... Uh, about Superman and uh, all, all of the, I, I, yeah. can't, I can't even remember all the shows I watched. You know, was, was, was that like a staple for you? So like oh, every yeah. Saturday morning? Every or, Saturday. Yeah. It, it was Saturday afternoon. Saturday because afternoon? The theaters didn't even open until around noon. Did so, you have to line up back then like people are lining up now for all of these oh, movies? Oh, you bet. You yeah. bet. We, we as kids could go to our local theater. Usually for a dime, okay, because that's what a theater ticket costs. I feel like everything is, yeah. it was a dime. It was everything like the was comic a dime. was a dime, comic the movie was, was a dime. dime. Yeah. If you had a dollar full of dimes, you were you were you, you were able were, to have a weekend you, of fun. You were good to go. <laughs> and then on top of that, we had another component of comics on the radio, right? Because there was a radio show, and uh, there was a, even a Superman show, and Superman was voiced by the actor Bud Collier. You know, yeah. Bud Collier was the man of steel. You know? <laughs> so you know, all these great radio voices. And so this is how I grew up. And, and right. then many years later, uh, television came in, and I began watching you know, amazing, fantastic programs like The Twilight Zone. Not only did I watch The Twilight Zone, I met Rod Serling. Oh, wow. So submitted for your approval, Mr. Floyd Norman. See, I, I'm sitting there like I, I am... This is my element. Like, yeah. I, I remember these things because I'm a little bit older than some of our audience members. Yeah, yeah. But I remember some of these things that you're bringing up. But I want to take it back to make sure that we get it. And, and we'll plug a lot of stuff at the end. You bet. But what, what I think is interesting is kind of getting to know what you're talking about in a sense of getting that visual. You know, you're an yeah. animator, so you create that visual element. When you talk about growing up, where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Southern California, a oh, little nice. town called Santa Barbara. A uh, little coastal community. Right. Uh, that was that. I I could not think of a better place to grow up. 
Yeah. Because not only was it just the perfect environment, uh, we were also a creative community. Okay. And that is, believe it or not, in Santa Barbara, it was inhabited by screenwriters, actors, film composers, singers, dancers. They were all in Santa Barbara because of its proximity to Hollywood. Right. Hollywood was simply a, an hour drive down the California coast, and you would be in, in Hollywood. So for a lot of entertainers who didn't want to live in Tinseltown, they wanted to get away and, and, and live in a more normal community, a lot of them moved north to Santa Barbara because it was you know, far enough away and yet still close enough to their jobs. Many actors and movie stars do that today. They still right. live in Santa Barbara, Montecito, Summerland because of its proximity to the entertainment industry. That's amazing, and I think uh, if, if I'm understanding it right, and, and as we talked off camera, please yeah. correct me. It's, yeah. it's something that I think is very important to capture. Uh, it seems like all you're, you're growing up with every aspect of entertainment. You bet. Right, or more importantly, creative elements. Exactly. It's not just entertainment in a sense of the visual element. It's also musically and everything else. Oh, all of that, How? Yeah. What, what type of music were, were you into? Like, I mean, obviously, we talked a little bit yeah. about comics and some of the yeah. stuff on film, but I'm, I'm a full-spectrum kind of guy because I believe oh, yeah. it really, it so really gives you an insight into maybe some of the stuff that you were able to do later. What was the music scene like in, in that environment? Well, as I said, because we were such an artistic community, it wasn't just my artwork, you know, and I had the advantage of uh, having artists around to, right. to be my mentors, but there was also music. For instance, my music teacher in high school was a man named Henry Brubeck. Okay. Well, his brother was the jazz legend Dave Brubeck. Ooh. So that was the kind of people I had a chance to be around right. and to learn from. Now, that, that is a real advantage. If you're a kid... And, and you are in touch with all of these amazing people, well, that's great inspiration. Yeah. And I would say I was so lucky to grow up in a community where I had access to so many talented people who helped me take that next step yeah. to one day be a professional creative myself. And I think that's a great segue. You've done this before. You've done yeah. this probably a lot I'd more. I probably have. I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> so I you, have. You, you segue right into it, and, and let's kind of dive into that, because I think that's what maybe uh, people might know you from, or maybe right. they don't know the impact that you've had on some of the stuff they might have seen or heard yeah. or any of that. So, so sh you know, shifting it, were you in Santa Bar Barbara the whole time? Like, did you, did oh, you, yeah. Yeah? So I grew up. I was born in Santa Barbara. Okay. I grew up there, went through the entire school system from kindergarten to UC Santa Barbara. I was going to say, like, yeah, I figured yeah. that was where it was going to lead into that's, next. That's right. right. So UC Santa Barbara, wh what do you, I mean, you've got all these creative elements and yeah. you've taken part in pretty much all of them in some ways. I mean, yeah. having jazz legends, teaching oh, yeah. a, you know, a, mu or a brother of a jazz legend, which oh, yeah. I'm sure in his own right yeah. probably could have been just as good. Yeah. Uh, how do you transition that? Like when you go to college now, now you're trying to build a, a career. Yeah. You know, you're trying to see what that next step is going to look like. What, what did you actually go and get your degree in? Well, the one thing that was kind of cool about my life is that I always knew what I wanted to do. Oh, yeah? You know, a lot of people don't. Right. A lot, a lot of people have no idea what their career is going to be. And, and they spend their high school years, their college years, trying to figure out, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? Well, I didn't have that problem. I knew right. what I was going to do. So I kind of enjoyed the journey. Yeah. When I was in high school and college, I played in a band in Santa Barbara. Not because I was looking to be a professional musician one day. Mm -hmm. I played in a band because it was fun. Matter of fact, one of our band members, Chip, Chip uh, Crosby, was the older brother of the rock musician David Crosby. Nice. Crosby still, you know, Crosby yeah. stills and Nash. Yeah. And so I, I knew, I knew David Crosby. And, and, but this was my life. I grew up around these uh, amazing and talented people. I always knew I was headed for the Walt Disney Studio. Really? And I, yeah. But I love how you transition yeah, that because yeah. I, I want to, again, remember, I hope everybody's taking notes because the people that he's naming off yeah. are some of the greatest people that to this day stand the test of time, both creatively, musically, any of the things that we're talking about. Yeah. But, you know, you, you go into this, like, Disney thing, right? You know, yeah. you go right into this. Like, how did you know? Like, how, you, how did you know that you... you wanted this and more importantly that that this was going to be your next chapter that you're going to take all of this creative stuff that you've been blessed with for all mm -hmm. of those years and then transition it right into doing this other part of it yeah well a lot of my uh, friends and 
creative colleagues, many of us had the same uh, shared experience. Uh, both the, the young men and the young, uh, and the young women knew. We just sort of knew by yeah. usually the age of middle school, we knew what we wanted to do. Okay. We knew we wanted to do this job. We didn't necessarily know how we were going to get there, right? But we knew this that's is a, that's it. A, that's a great yeah. way to clarify it, right? Oh, yeah. I think yeah. that that's an interesting point that not a lot of people now may may fully understand. Yeah, you know, you may know what you want, you may yeah. feel like that's what you're supposed to do, right? But getting there is the funnest part. Yeah, it or, is. Or maybe it, not it the is. funnest at, at the yeah. moment because you're going to go through challenges and roadblocks and pitfalls and everything yeah. else. But if you truly believe that you, you're destined for this, right? You're your only motivation. You got to believe it. You got to believe it, yeah. but you have to also have action. Yeah. You so gotta. how did you do that? How did you then create those actions that led you there? I think I was a lot luckier than my colleagues who came from the Midwest. Okay. Or all the way from back east, Pennsylvania, and, and, and because we we came from all over. Right. I was in Santa Barbara, which put me. 90 miles away from the Walt Disney Studio. Absolutely. So I was almost a neighbor. I mean, I was so, <laughs> I was so close by. So when I graduated from high school, all I had to do was take a, a, about a one-hour drive down the California coast to Burbank, California, yeah. and the Walt Disney Studio. Which is a horrible drive. That must have been horrible to take that drive and see all those amazing sights, right? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It was a gorgeous drive back yeah, in the Yeah, it, it was amazing, Because there right? was no traffic. There, yeah, I was going to say, like, I drove was, it once, and I'm like, yeah. this is not what I expected. No, and today, movies don't do it. I don't know what the movies do to allow you to see one vehicle kind of taking yeah. this route, because that's never occurred it in never probably happens. since you did it, right? Not, not in real life. <laughs> not in but, real life. But, but, but back then, it was a gorgeous drive right. down, down the California coast, all the way down to L.A. Uh, and to the Walt Disney Studio, where, you know, for me, uh, that first step of getting there was so much easier. Say, my friend Annie Gunther, who came all the way from uh, uh, Pittsburgh, you know, Pennsylvania, right, and all the way across the country. And I think she traveled by Greyhound bus. So for her, it was more of a journey. For me, it was a uh, just a cool ro uh, road trip. Yeah, down down the coast, <laughs> or something you've done your entire yeah, life, like exactly. sites that you've seen. Yeah. And I want to make sure that we get it because I know that you got stuff you got to do, and I appreciate the time that you've spent with us. But mm -hmm. I think there, there's a lot of things that our audience may need to hear sure. you directly say, and I, and I think um, there's things that I can't do justice. So there, there's a major accomplishment that you had, uh, and is it Walt Disney Studios? Is that where you were employed by? Is that the job? Oh yeah, that was yeah. that was the dream job. That's, yeah, and that's when you got there, what? What was your significant achievement that you were able to do initially as soon as you stepped foot in those doors? Well, my initial achievement was simply to, to, to be hired. <laughs> to be hired. Yeah. And, I, just, and I just wanted the job. And when you were hired, what, what was the achievement? Oh, uh, it was just awesome being there because not only did I have a job. Right. But I had a job at the greatest animation studio in the world. That also meant I had the opportunity to work and learn from the greatest animation artists in the world. Absolutely. So all of the giants who made the Disney classic films, the men and women who created Pinocchio, Snow White, Fantasia, Dumbo, all of these classic yeah. Disney films were still there. That's amazing. And so I learned from all of these people. They were my teachers. They were my instructors. So I had the benefit of all of these Disney masters. And then to top that off, I had the opportunity in 1966 to work with Walt Disney himself, uh, something I never could have even imagined. See, you're, you're teaching me a lot of things. I hear Barry the Lead a lot, you know, yeah. and, and everything else. Uh, with that, I don't think you can – well, I, I know you can get better than that, but unfortunately I don't have enough time to dive into this, yeah. and I'm very upset because I really want to. But I also want to give our audience and yourself an opportunity to continue to plug things because they're going to take this – and then be able to continue to watch additional stuff. Right. So how can our audience continue to not only hear this interview, but hear your story, right? I was going to say, I believe uh, someone's in the crowd yelling it. So where can they hear and see your story now? Well, my story is told in a documentary called Floyd Norman and Animated Life, which is still being shown on Netflix. So you don't even have to buy the DVD. No. You can go on Netflix and uh, see my career and my life and a uh, feature-length documentary film. Well, that's awesome. And uh, that's just... 
and, and my career continues. It's not like it's over. I know. I'm sorry. Like you're looking at me it's like not uh, o- it's not do over. You know yet. something I don't? Uh, not, yeah. Did they tell you? Uh, actually, not over yet. <laughs> no. But but guys and ladies, I, I I strongly encourage you. I've had the pleasure of 15 minutes with this amazing person. But more importantly, you're going to be able to take this and continue to follow Floyd Norman and his <laughs> career. But definitely check out the documentary on Netflix. And Floyd, lastly, anything else you want to say before we head out of here? I just want to say to all the kids out there who would love to be a part of this amazing business that I've had the pleasure of enjoying all of my life, uh, if you want to do this job, if you want to be creative, if you want to have fun, uh, work hard, learn your stuff, be dedicated, and you can be a part of the greatest industry in the world. I've been working for Disney all my life. You can do the same. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure.